So let's keep that part. <laughs> uh, let me share my screen. The second one, this one. Do you see it now? Yes. Uh, okay, yes, you mentioned, yeah, I'm DevOps architect and CUE Azure cluster. So I'm leading mostly Azure uh, projects, but on, not only. I'm leader was DevOps and at Ukraine, which is open tech project at Software. It's kind of charity project. Uh, as well as trainer, coach, and mentor. I have a couple of trainings I'm leading, I'm conducting, and so on. And yeah, I'm I like cats actually. Uh, and today we are we will mostly speaking about the CI CD, the design part, and, and uh, the proper documentation of it. I'll share some of my examples, some of flows that we did on the project, how we aligned with customers, how we capture all the documentation, how we share it, how we structure it, uh, and talk actually the whole process, how we sell it, how we pitch the CI CD to, to the customer. And uh, actually, what are the goals of CI CD where we are aimed um, to achieve? Is actually, is, uh, all of you might know that first of all, that the budget. So we would need to reduce operational cost, uh, and that, that's the target that we need to achieve in implementing the CI CD on the project. The other goals could be the improved quality, the improved productivity, the in increase release frequency, uh, and so on and so forth. The faster feedback we get on business, uh, new features, the faster we implement, we could implement the new features. Um, what else? You know, any other suggestions you might put in chat or voice it over in case you would like. And um how do we usually start actually reviewing multiple projects and, and dealing with multiple projects when i get it just uh, when i run into project on the very beginning stage um reviewing the pipelines from customer what i see they, we usually start with something simple uh, just at the build some simple build step some simple um deployment step and, and actually that's it uh, i was in some assessment i uh, came to the like run into meeting and uh, the customer said yeah we have CICD implemented uh, we have simple pipelines that something built something deployed and th th that's it um and actually i asked it would you like would you like to improve it would you like to achieve some some quality would you like to achieve some something else actually and oops that's my mouse and yeah and just doing that we are done it's customers satisfied for some level but if you go deeper the design process itself uh, is usually uh, the architects following the usually we doing it's a iterative process. So we do something, we improve something. And again, we get a feedback, then we do something, improve something, we get a feedback, uh, and, and going forward. And um, I would, that presentation, I would like to encourage you to uh, think in advance about it. Um, and I'll share the tools I'm using to validate the quality of uh of work to validate the quality of pi pipelines of what actually i'm doing in general and uh having having a lot of experience from my previous project i've structured it a bit uh in a simple way so all of the steps i'm sure you're aware of and uh, usually we started with the design the branching strategy uh stated it then then design the build strategies and going to the code testing code, code security the artifact strategy environment structure um then going to some deployment strategy database migration uh the functional testing the load performance uh think about some external integration and actually they validate 
um, the final final design of pipelines. And uh, th that's how we actually present it. Usually, it's the time how I present it to customer and how to pitch the TI process to customer uh, in order to start working on, on the improvements and quality of the CI CD pipelines. Why we need all of the stages actually uh, to start, for example, thinking um, about the branching strategy first. Uh, for sure, I'm like pretty a fan of the simple, simple, simplified strategies like GitHub or uh, trunk based flows. Uh, we for sure would need to discuss it with the development teams uh, if you're talking about the application pipelines and so on, uh, or discuss it internally in DevOps team in, in, in case we are thinking about the infrastructure pipelines like Terraform or Bicep or, or something else. Um, in that case, we would need to validate these several items like code review strategy, like merging strategy, like code style, um, pull request, uh, build validation, the branching strategy itself, the whole branching strategy, and for example, advanced uh, Git tools usage that might, might be a semantic versioning or other tools that you might integrate into pipelines. Uh, and those topics we would need to think about in advance, um, check it with the relevant people, with the responsible people, validate it, state it, and going deeper into the design of the other aspects of the pipeline. The same to talking about the um, build pipelines. Uh, we would need to discuss what build tools uh, we need to use, uh, what are the build instructions we would need to implement. So usually we get the build instructions from, from the development team and then script it into some multi-stage pipeline or, or just drag and drop if you use just simple uh, visual pipelines in Jenkins or Azure DevOps or any other tools. Uh, we might need to think about the parallel build or external uh, CI server service to be integrated, uh, built agent type hosted on prem, and that's trade offs usually we would need to resolve in case we are thinking about the security um, issues of the pipeline. And for sure, the built agent specifications, what software, what packages would need to need to be installed on it, and so on. And uh, Going to that, we would need to, for sure, uh, that is, and like to be aligned with the architectural process, we would need to schedule the meeting. We would need to discuss those things with relevant people in advance. We would need to state it or let's say document it, visualize it um, somehow to build some diagrams, how we would structure the Git flow, how we would structure the build flow and so on. And finally, share. Um, the same, if uh, if you are speaking about the testing strategy, uh, for example, we might uh, go to uh, we might run to, to resolve in some questions like unit testing implementation, integration testing implementation, uh, unit test reporting, and the several tools might be used in there. Uh, the same, the test visualization, test result visualization, um, choosing some code security tools um, and code security profiles, gate thresholds, or something like that. Um, and again, I've compiled for myself, I compiled in the, the table with the relevant people uh, we would need to uh, like collect and then discuss with them those aspects when we are going to the choosing between uh, this or that tool uh, we might think about the trade-off and trade-off analysis because um, implementing some tool one or tool two would would um, would improve something we, we could um, have some pros and cons of each of the two 
that we for sure needs to, uh, need to analyze and um, going deeper in that for example I have faced it on my previous project with um, trade-offs like which kind of Kafka to use even half versus Kafka or um, again which kind of CI tool to use it might be GitLab or versus Jenkins versus something else um, and going deeper in that we might need to uh, to into the trade-off analysis where we need to um, capture carefully the client, uh, client requirements mostly non-functional requirements so uh, what the client would like to resolve implementing this or that tool um, what what client expects of uh, implementing that for example improving security improving something else um, we would also need to take into account the team skill set so if the team ha have the skills in implementing Azure DevOps, let's say, so most likely it would be the best choice for them. And yeah, implementing, uh, choosing between tools, we would need to collect all the possible actions, compile that uh, I would like propose and encourage you to compile into the table to, to validate with customer in case you need it. Um, create a comparison. So let's say it's in simple words and kind of trade-off analysis cost analysis and finally uh, based on that you could um, choose something mm. oops oops yeah artifact the next if you are running for example in and choosing the artifact strategy what kind of artifacts to use etc etc um, we would need to resolve this kind of questioning like versioning what version we would use uh, to store the artifact what artifact types do we need uh, what artifact storage will we use it could be some third party um, artifact storage like um, nexus or artifactory it could be some uh, what permissions uh, the teams will have the dev team will have the devops team will have and something like that uh, here we would need to identify the package dependencies and, and and so on and as i said i would like to visualize everything for example you might put everything in a simple kind of diagram what's the dependencies between artifact or use some advanced methods like a dependency matrix or something like that uh, to visualize the dependency why do we need that again uh, because in that case we would uh, understand in what actually sequence we would need to build all of them uh, to uh, to collect all the platform all the application and at, at one bunch at, at one as a one platform so and again uh, when you uh, when you know um, when you collect all of that information regarding the branching strategy when you know all of the information regarding the environment so what is the environment structure you have uh, what is the purpose of this environment and so on you might put everything together and design the whole environment strategy so how your artifact uh, artifacts will be promoted from the one environment to another environment uh, what is the approvals in between of these environments and actually finally somehow visualize it and document it i'm pretty fan of like simple diagrams just uh, to put some so to put some schema of that uh, to communicate it uh, to the customer as a more, in a more efficient way uh, talking about approvals you would need to decide on what stages on what environment what kind of approvals and groups you you would need to uh, configure for example the on the QA environment you might think about some QA uh guys um, have an approval rights on the UAT it could be 
uh, automation guys on the stage environment. It could be QC lead or the QC lead or something like that. And for upper environment, they could be business analysts or architects or some of this advanced stuff. And for sure, you would need to, again, to, to discuss it uh, with the relevant people, with the responsible persons. Uh, the approval gates, the approvers list, the pi pipeline permissions, and the metric collection, KPIs, or this kind of stuff. And uh, going deeper, if we are discussing the deployment strategy, um, I'm sure you you are aware about the uh, like the zero time deployment strategies, like rolling updates, like canary releases, like. Uh, blue green deployment hmm. on this stage you would need to discuss it because it would affect the release process and it might it should be aligned with the client re requirements as well so uh, you might use the rollback strategy um, again the rollback strategy you should discuss the deployment tool set uh, what you should uh, should use how you would apply inversion or patches. Uh, do you need to use some kind of service mesh or something like that? The security restrictions and limitations between the APIs and applications and functions or so on. Pre-deployment, post-deployment actions. Um, and deeper and deeper. Again, if if you are talking, for example, about the database migrations, uh, that might be a next step. You would need to think about the database migration tool set, the whole database migration process, the schema versioning, the running the pre and post deployment scripts, and which is most important, the rollback strategy, which is kind of complicated stuff for the database. And finally, when you collect everything, like all the information regarding tests, uh, in order to like have a kind of big picture about how the pipeline is structured, how the test on what stage your test uh, should be run, uh, you could also use some kind of schema to visualize it. Um, you might see the some example of one of my previous projects, how it could be documented. So on each stage, we, we have some kind of quality gates that contains a different kind of tests and so on and so forth. And when you are going into the final, final design of the CI-CD pipelines, you, you could also um, put that on the diagram, you could visualize it uh, somehow using the sequence diagram or the some simple diagrams. Um, and here you should uh, think about on the final stage about the credentials management, about the secrets and certificates, uh, the roles, the responsibilities, the whole the release strategy, release procedure, uh, the validation of the uh, acceptance aspect. Um, what had I missed actually? Um, in order to validate myself, um, there are several tools I'm using, and I would encourage you to use it. Actually, uh, we are heavily using the. Sorry. Uh, Someone's on YouTube. Actually, any questions about uh, that part? Looks like no question. Uh, yeah, silence means no questions. Okay. Um, what we are using uh, to um, validate the quality, quality of pipelines and quality infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm encouraging you to try to use the well-architected framework. And actually, um, you might see I have a couple of sessions, a couple of 
uh, we've used the, uh, the same uh, well and this zoom, zoom panel how to hide it mm. some of the questions uh, and the well architected review actually contains uh, several pillars uh, talking about Azure, it contained the five pillars, uh, the same well-architected review we have in AWS and, and GCP. And talking about the pipelines, you might think about the, you might use the operational excellence pillar to validate the quality of the process and validate, actually validate your work, actually validate yourself. Um, and uh, the quality of pipeline that compose it or just to check in order for you not to miss anything in that flow and so the same well architected framework could be applied on uh, different clouds in azure and in aws and gcp and you might uh, choose the operational peers and go into the like best practices here for example in aws uh, the well architected review in AWS you could run from the um, AWS console. Uh, for the Microsoft projects, we have a separate uh, separate uh, site with assessments where you could find the well architected review and just run it, run it and validate it. There's a couple of uh, other tools that might be interesting and might be valuable for you. Uh, here it is a DevOps checklist compiled of some guy, uh, Steve. Um, it's posted on the Twitter. It's pretty useful to um, the same to validate the pipelines you have and to validate the quality of it. So you could just go through this checklist to check the items you have, and later you would get a feedback what you missed or what could could be improved here. Uh, there are a couple of more things, the Azure checklist on the professional.com. Uh, I've actually prepared the mine, uh, as you might see on the presentation, I put everything in the tables that I'm following to validate the quality of pipelines. So again, the question, did you use something like that uh, in your practices to assess the pipeline to make the CI CD assessments? Uh, do you do that regularly on your projects? Anyone? <laughs> I like to chat, I know. Oh. But everyone is silent. Okay. Uh, Looks like totally new for everyone. <laughs> uh, I, I think no, it shouldn't yeah. be totally new. <laughs> of course. It shouldn't, but uh, that might be pretty useful. And actually speaking about uh, what we are doing, um, I will also share with you a couple of my artifacts. So I would encourage you to create your own checklist based on your project. So you did something, please capture it and use it as a checklist so reuse it as a checklist on your future projects uh, just to validate the quality of your work or the quality of others work in case you assess the uh, clients pipelines for example something like that and why documentation is important again i would encourage you to document everything uh, because the documentation for me, first of all, is a knowledge sharing tools. Um, putting something in a diagram, it's first of all for me as an architect, I state how we do that and communicate it first of all to my team, the next to the client, how we would see these things to be implemented. Uh, and first of all, yeah, it's a, like knowledge sharing tool, it's a communication tool, uh, could see. And um, based on my experience, we compiled a kind of uh, wiki 
again, you might use some, uh, for example, the Confluence, which is the uh, most popular, the PK engine documentation engine. I'm a fan of uh, documentation at the code or wiki as a code. And for those projects where I can use it, I'm like try to use it actually. And uh, we created a kind of wiki at its template um, in our uh, center of excellence that we are reusing it. We could just grab it and reuse on every project. So the structure is defined again um we have some uh, some kind of structure um, we can guide how to use it the design framework that we just discussing we are discussing uh then if you go to the for example some release management uh, there i put some documentation templates the process templates the release templates uh the templates of uh, software architecture docu document, uh, the uh, access control template, or uh, the matrix actually. Uh, uh, again, talking about the pipelines, the branching strategy, artifact strategy, what should be there, and so on. So this kind of um, and this kind of templates, it's um, useful because I'm defined the structure structure of the documentation on the very beginning of the project. I communicate usually communicate it directly to the customer. So that that is the structure of our documentation. There we would put the documentation about the pipeline. There we would put the documentation about the um investigation, knowledge base and so on and so forth. And that is a standard actually. I'm pretty like to reuse on uh, pretty like to use on all of my projects. So they th that's kind of uh, structure description. And again, going deeper in that, uh, when we have all of these things and, and collect all of that together, uh, we would run into the most longer cycle when we plan some work, then design it, then implement it and test it, document it, and then finally share it, and going back, going back to the planning again. Um, and finally, finally, when we are doing all of this, we we could achieve the most uh, important DevOps value, which is which is transparency. And um, as a summary of it, I would encourage you to plan your work and plan your design in advance. Even if you are going to do some, some simple stuff like CICD pipelines, I would encourage you to, to create your own checklist if you are, or, or we use just well-known checklist like well-architected framework, cloud adoption framework in case you are thinking about some governance things and then do the review your stuff regularly according to best practices and again according to using this checklist and document all the things and communicate to the client transparently that's that's pretty it from my side uh any any questions again from your side uh, you might share your experience, how you did it, and the problems you have faced it with. Um, yeah, we have. Could I, could I ask you one question? Sorry. Sure. It's from Orest from SDO. Uh, so uh, I would like to clarify if you have any kind of similar templates, but for actual pipelines for example if you decided together with a client to go with azure devops in your project do you have any kind of pipeline templates in yaml for example for such cases some typical build steps some typical deployment steps in jobs something like that do you use that in your practice uh yes we did uh, yes we did not so 
Um, yes, we did actually. We are researching all this stuff and we have a kind of accelerators. And I'm leading in several accelerations inside the COE, inside the Azure cluster. And again, uh, we have tried to um, prepare the accelerator for the multi-staged pipelines. Um, should be some somewhere there. Uh, let me. I'm just asking because it, this might be like a golden template, you know, for everybody using a specific tool on their projects. Yeah, I understand you totally. Uh, let me try to find it. And actually, Zia, you might. Um, I'm not sure if it was presented widely on the for the whole company, but it was presented somewhere. Let me quickly find this accelerator. Yeah, while well, you are searching right here, uh, if you are looking for good examples or inspiration, uh, GitLab allows you to introduce uh, to try something with Auto DevOps. So basically, if you have source code, it will mm -hmm. try to implement based on your code to uh, to use. Uh, all uh, required uh, stages, builds, checks, and so on. For example, if you have Python, it will add your linting, uh, unit test, and so on. Yeah, yeah, you're so absolutely right. Of, uh, inspiration. Uh, most of uh, modern CI CD tools do the same stuff actually for uh, particular projects, but we are talking more about you know some complex uh, architectural scenarios where you need to kick off a project right off from scratch it might contain like multiple multiple even multiple dozens of repositories and you need to gather all that stuff together in a single architectural vision where you need to design the actual uh, pipelines ci cd part and actually i think that having such templates as a company might be a very useful thing actually to accelerate our efforts on new projects. And I wasn't sure that we have something like that, just, just asking to clarify. Uh, actually, yeah, that uh, you might see my screen. Um, yep. The ADO multi-stage pipeline, we created uh, some guys from our clusters created this pipeline. Uh, Denis Shasliftsev uh, worked on that accelerator, so that's a simple pipeline containing the build stage and the deployment to the like synthetic development test and, and production of staging, I don't remember actually, some staging environment. So that's a multi-staged pipeline and yeah, I know that it was used a couple of times on some projects just we demo it to customer how how it might look like. So we did some kind of um, workshop to customer where we demo it and say it's there, uh, the structure of the pipeline, it's completely anonymized it, it based on the uh, Microsoft, uh, some default application, I don't know, I uh, don't remember actually. So it was some web application. Probably some .NET Core web application. Yeah, demo yeah, from .NET. No, the, ah, yeah, but some limited. It's not the .NET Core, it puts some .NET framework, but again. Um, so. Yeah, it's, it's great to see we have something like that. It might be very useful stuff for everybody it's actually, here. Ah, it's, it's finally commented some stuff, but yeah. Uh, it's templatized actually. That's a, that's a kind of high quality things and the templatized or all the practices that Microsoft stated uh, how to design it, we use it. So we templatize it. There could be some kind of different deployment strategy uh, we tested here. Uh, and uh, actually, yeah, uh, that might be useful to demo it to the customers. Again, yeah. from the CI/CD part, uh, that's a good thing to collect all your like previous experience. If you did some nice pipeline, you might just change the application to substitute the application with some demo application from again from Microsoft or from from another uh, vendor, and just to save it for your 
for your purposes, for the future purposes to demo it to the customer, how this flow could look like, how this flow could work, actually. Actually, it would be nice if we could have such templates, similar stuff for different tools shared across like our practices. So we could rely on that while kicking off new projects because it's like a common challenge for all of us, I think. So there might be a separate discussion around that, but I'm just asking if we if we are trying to collect such templates and try to use it to speed up our initial efforts with new projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to totally agree with you. It might be nice to have the common library uh, inside the company for such kind of tools. Um, the problem is, and that, that, that for sure, that's a whole DevOps problem because the DevOps is based on the variety of tools. The, like the amount of different technologies that we might use, it's really huge. And the same if you aim, for example, in GCP, uh, GCP cloud, the Azure pipelines might not be useful in that case because mostly they will reference some GitLab pipelines or Jenkins or whatever, or Spinnaker. Uh, in Azure projects, uh, in most cases, we use Azure DevOps or again, GitHub. Since uh, GitHub is acquired by Microsoft, the GitHub pipelines might, um, might be chosen in that case. In, in AWS world, again, I've seen an examples of using GitLab. I saw some example of using Azure DevOps or something like that. So uh, in case we are aimed this, we would need to prepare the templates for pipelines and the different tools like template for GitLab, template for TeamCity, template for Jenkins, template for blah, 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 whatever. Absolutely agree. But uh, this mostly depends on business cases we're facing. So we could actually, mm -hmm. we could actually analyze this data because we have it, right? Uh, how many cases of each tool application we uh, faced in the past, we could mm -hmm. actually have some kind of uh, common stuff in majority of cases like Azure DevOps, like Jenkins, I don't know, GitHub Actions, anything, GitLab. We could collect some major templates for this major part of our business at least. So uh, I absolutely understand and share your opinions that we cannot cover everything just because we would like to have it in our portfolio, but I think it's still possible for majority of the business. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I agree with you. That might be in like kind of separate discussion on that, how to achieve that. I've seen it should be some kind of initiative of, of global initiative of collecting the experience of uh, about the reusing some kind of artifacts, pipelines, and that no approaches, tools, again yeah. something 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 absolutely um, it's about like not reinventing the bicycle yeah uh, we even we even researched the things of using the like the best extension for the azure devops and for the github uh we also like researched that we compared some list of extensions that might be useful on every project that use azure devops or github um because these tools have a not similar package like artifacts, not artifacts, the uh, extensions, uh, but pretty similar list of extensions. Um, and yeah, that's also kind of useful when you come to projects, for example, and you are thinking about improving the quality of pipelines and you would need to introduce some testing and for most of that we have some extensions how to integrate this kind of this tool or this kind of test in the pipeline so in that case we would need to install this extension uh, some of these services are like paid and that, that we need to communicate to customer but again that's a list of best practices for example and having the list of extensions we won't just come to customer say here here a list of tools we might integrate if you're interested in. Uh, let's do it. That's cost this amount of money. And just a question, approve or not approve. Petra thinks 
a lot for this extended answer. Uh, nice to see we're having such a good practices in place. And I think we could benefit from having them shared across uh, a bigger audience, not only in your organization, but potentially for interested uh, delivery projects as well, if that's possible and applicable, of course. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Sorry for taking a stage for so long. No problem. Thank you very much for your for your questions. And yeah, we could have a separate uh, thread of for this discussion how to like do this globally or integrate these best practices globally or something something like that. Great. Cheers. But thank you very much. Yeah. Any other questions? So you might share your experience. I'm pretty interested in that. If you have something similar or, or doing something close to that in a different way. Questions, comments, notes. Looks okay, like yes. no. <laughs> Silence, yeah, means no. Uh, good, I think we could wrap up. Okay, I would like to say uh, thank you, Dmitro, for your uh, time, for sharing your experience with our DevOps community. And thanks all for joining. Uh, we hope this uh, meeting will be, uh, was, uh, sorry, interesting and uh, useful for you. Uh, guys, you will receive a feedback form shortly. Please complete it. Your opinion matters for us. And of course, we will be happy to see all of you next event. So uh, have a nice day, everyone. Take care of yourself. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Thanks. Have a